Hi, welcome to the UCSD Cosmos Q&A session. My name is Becky Hames and I am the Assistant Director of the UCSD Cosmos program. The purpose of this session is to allow you to type in your questions so that we can answer your burning questions about the Cosmos program. Uh, a reminder to you that UC Davis, who also has a Cosmos program, will be hosting a Q&A chat as well on February the 5th from 4 to 5.30. You can check their website for more information. Now, also to remind you that our application, online application, is currently open and we'll be closing on February the 21st at 5 o'clock. Make sure that all of your application materials are turned in by postmarked by that date and time. We also want to uh, encourage you, if you haven't already, to look at our videos that are posted on our YouTube channel. The links can be accessed on our UCSD Cosmos website. We'll be providing you with that website address later on in this session. So if you want to chat, you'll see a chat area on the right side of your screen and we encourage you to ask questions that you would like to know answers to and we'll be leaving uh, we'll be ending at 7:30 tonight so let's get started with our first question So the first question that I have has been posted is, where do I find out more about uh, the specifics about the cluster I'm interested in? To get more information on a cluster, you can either go to the Cosmos application website, which you see here, the online application website, or you can go to the specific campus, and here's an example of our website, and you can click under academics and cluster, uh, courses and clusters there. And there you'll find the listed clusters where you can click to get information on the course description, the faculty, uh, any prerequisites, as well as additional information that might be available. So we highly recommend that you look at those before making the decision on which cluster you want to apply to. Our next question is, how important is my GPA? Well, it's certainly important, and we do need that information. But we also would like information regarding why you want to be in Cosmos, why you want to be in the specific cluster you, that you apply to, which you have a first and second choice option. Also, we want to hear from your teachers, so either one math, one science, or two math or two science teachers. We want to hear them talk to us about you. So make sure you pick a teacher that knows you and is going to say great things about you. Also, there'll be questions about extracurricular activities related to STEM or leadership. And so we'd like you to also list those. We'll be asking how frequent you do those activities and the length of those activities. So very important that you really work on all the components of your application besides giving us your GPA information. Okay, here we go. So how many teacher recommendations do you need for your application? As I mentioned for the last question is we need two, two teacher recommendations. Now, when you list the teacher, you'll also list their email and we'll be sending them a link to be able to respond and give the recommendation to us directly. So it's important that you tell your teacher that they're going to be receiving that link as well as to tell them to check their spam folder if they didn't get the link in it after you apply, have applied to Cosmos. So those go directly to us. Please don't send us more than two. We only accept 
either one math, one science, or two math, or two science, but not we don't need more than two. And if you have a teacher that maybe taught you the year before that would give you a stronger recommendation, then ask them if they're, you might have, it may be an 11th grader and you might have your 10th grade math teacher write your uh, recommendation, that's fine. So let's take a look at our next question that's coming up. So this is in regards to uh, 2013 with taxes. Um, we want to get, if your parents are divorced or separated, then we would need both taxes or whoever claims you as dependent. If you have specific questions regarding that, you can certainly email us or give our office a call because sometimes it's very special with those situations. So um, ideally, we really want to um, get the uh, tax return, and that would be the 2013 tax return, or we can take 2012 if your parents haven't completed their 2013 tax return yet, and then we'll ask for that later, uh, later on. So let's go to our next question. What can I do on my application to have a better chance of acceptance? Well, as I mentioned in the last question, it's important that you uh, have a complete application, that you don't have spelling or grammatical errors. So what we recommend is that you ha have someone else read your responses, your prompts that you um, are responding to, and uh, just double check and make sure that you're not using uh, any typographical errors or grammar errors or spelling type errors. Uh, you could maybe type it up in a Word document first, have someone take a look at it like your parent or your teacher, and then you can copy and paste it right back into the application because you can save the application as you go along. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. So that's good news, right? Let's move on to our next question. Keeping me busy tonight. Good job. Does this information apply to the other campuses too? The information that I'm providing you with tonight does apply to all campuses. If it doesn't, I'll let you know. But I can tell you that so far, all the information that has been provided uh, is uh, going to be across the four campuses, whether it be financial aid or application or um, information on the clusters. Good question. So uh, what are my payment options for the application fee? So you can either pay by check or money order and that check should be made out to UC Regents and then sent directly to the campus. You'll get an, e you'll get an address uh, at the end of the application, you'll have a confirmation page. There will be the address that you need to send your check or money order. Alternatively, you can uh, do a credit card charge, and that is also found on the top tab of our application page. So you can make a credit card payment, the $30, for the application. We do not waive application fees that goes across to all four campuses, that policy, because we feel like we want you to be take some ownership on your application and um, take it seriously. So uh, you, if you still have a problem with the $30, my recommendation is that you maybe talk to your counselor uh, or a school administrator. Sometimes there's funds available from the school that can help you with that if that's a problem. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, can I change my application information after I've submitted it? No, unfortunately you can't. Now we like to look at the Cosmos application as similar to a UC application, University of California application, and this would be similar to how that works. So once you have submitted, that information cannot be changed. So make sure you're very careful and you've proofread everything you send and make sure that you all your information as far as your email, 
uh, contact information, your teacher, your teacher recommendation information is all correct before you submit your application. How important are cluster prerequisites? Uh, they're very important. Um, most clusters, not all, but most have prerequisites. The majority do on each campus. So carefully look at the uh, cluster description and prerequisites because if you haven't met the prerequisite and you apply, most likely you're not going to be considered because there'll be other students who've taken the, the courses and they'll be uh, their applications will be forwarded on. Now, if you are taking a course right now, it's in progress, or you will be taking it, and it will be completed before Cosmo starts, then that would be fine to go ahead and include that in there. You can put in progress for the grade for those classes. We get that question a lot. So, again, if it's in progress, and it's a prerequisite, that will be considered, that's allowable for the prerequisite for the clusters. So we see this question a lot, how do I know if I qualify for financial assistance? Well, first of all, if you receive free or reduced lunch at your school, then you would qualify uh, automatically for our financial assistance. So you would just need to mail that letter that you participate in that from your school. It's a letter from your school that you can request and you would send that to us along with your application materials. Uh, if you don't receive free or reduced lunch and you have a hardship, your family has a hardship, uh, then you can go ahead and apply using our financial assistance form that's on the UCOP Cosmos, the Cosmos application website. You can fill out that form, your parents will complete it and attach their 2013 tax return. If they don't have their taxes done, they can send 2012 and we can ask for the updated one later on. Uh, but we need to have a tax return sent along with the form. And then we will let you know prior to you telling us whether or not you would like to uh, attend Cosmos. So first, you'll know that you've been accepted. Then you'll get the financial uh, assistance decision. Then you can make a decision whether or not you can join us for this summer. So the question is, how many applications do we receive each year? Well, across the sites, it's thousands uh, are received in the thousands. Uh, I can speak for UCSD this past summer. Uh, we received over 600 applications, and we accepted about 165 students. Uh, this year, we anticipate that we will be uh, having even more applications than ever before as we've expanded here at UCSD and have added an extra cluster to our existing eight, we'll have nine, and we'll be accepting more students, but we still ex expect to have more applications along with that. So um, it is competitive. About one in three, one in four students get accepted across the four sites. So uh, we get this question every once in a while, will we accept a paper or scanned application uh, via mail or email? And the answer is no. Uh, we only accept online applications. All of our data goes into a database and if we were to have you do that, if we were to do that, then we would have to manually put all that information in. And we have such a, a tight window of making decisions on students' acceptance that that is just not possible. So it is an online application only. Thank you for that question, though. We, we do get that one quite a bit. So how do you submit your transcripts? Well, you have a couple ways you can do that. You can either uh, talk to your school uh, usually there's a registrar or uh, a, a contact in your school office that sends out official transcripts. 
they have to be official. They can't be just, you know, copies of your report card or your progress report. They have to be sealed uh, with the school stamp on, on them. And you can either request it and mail it to us with the rest of your materials, or you can have it, the school send it directly to our address, which will be provided on your confirmation form that you get at the end of applying online. We also accept parchment and DocuFied uh, and other online uh, official transcript services. So those should be sent to the campus email, the Cosmos campus email. Do not send it to the UC that you're applying to. It will go to their admissions office and your transcripts will get lost. So make sure you send it to the email for the, your campus, the Cosmos. Usually it'll be like cosmos at ucsd.edu or cosmos at ucsc.edu, but you can check with the individual campus to find out the email. So uh, make sure you have that information correct. We did have last year some students that sent their application or their transcripts to our admissions office and we didn't get them in time for those students to be considered. Also, we've had students open up their transcripts. They'll open up that official uh, envelope and mail it to us. And that's also not acceptable. So it must be in a sealed envelope and then either sent by you in the sealed envelope or sent directly from your school. Make sure that your transcripts are sent to us either online via email by 5 p.m. on the 21st of February or postmarked by 5 p.m. on the 21st. If it comes late, it cannot be considered. We have way too many applications to review to allow late submissions. So the next question is, if I know a subject or a topic, but I haven't taken the course or the class, will you accept that as a prerequisite? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, we need to be able to have some sort of way to evaluate your success in a course, and that is what we do by looking at your grades. So just having some experience being in a club or an internship or a job or something like an organization isn't going to work. We really need to have a course that you've been evaluated in. Now it could be a community college course along with your high school courses or it could be uh, taken as an online course, uh, online high school course. That could be included but we need the official transcript from the institution that you took that course at. Very important. So, can I send in my uh, confirmation page, my uh, federal reduced school lunch letter and application fee in one envelope along with my tra official transcripts? Yes, that is fine, as long as all of those things are sent before the February 21st, 5 p.m. deadline. So that is fine to do that. You could, if you had a check you could also send that fee with all of those things as well. So that's fine. It's almost better than having all those things come separately, but don't panic. If the transcript has to be sent from your school, you can send the rest in all together. But don't forget your check. Don't forget to sign the confirmation page. Don't forget to have your parents sign it. And if you're applying for financial assistance and you don't have a letter from your school that you're receiving free or reduced lunch, then send in the financial assistance form, which can be accessed on the application website uh, when you go on to apply. You press the apply button, and maybe we can show that uh, here where that would be found, because we do have some students who are challenged with finding the financial assistance. So you're going to go here on the web page, then go to the application info button, and uh, Right he down here on the left, you'll see the link to the financial assistance form. There's also other information such as our flyers, which are in English and Spanish. You can also get a Cosmos application worksheet where you can see what the questions are going to be so you can anticipate them ahead of time. There's also a teacher recommendation form there, although that has to be done online, it cannot be done 
in, for paper for most of the campuses. If you have questions on that, contact the individual Cosmos campus you're applying to. At UCSD, we only accept online teacher recommendations. So check with the campus if that's a problem for one of your teacher recommendations, one of the teachers that recommends you. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So if you have a specific question uh, and it's not answered in this session or it's not answered on one of the uh, videos that we provided, and I highly recommend, again, if you haven't had a chance to check our videos that we have on YouTube, I recommend that you look at them. There's a wealth of information regarding the program in general, as well as uh, information on how to apply. We actually show you screenshots. So this is what our YouTube channel looks like. And here you can see the application uh, session that we did online, which goes page by page, step by step, on how to apply for the program. And again, this is the application that is used by all four sites. We use a universal application. Also, we have a great video that one of our Cosmos alum uh, hosts. And he in, in this video, he gives you general information about the four Cosmos programs. So it's very helpful. And again, I would highly recommend that you take a look at it. Uh, also, this session will be posted online uh, tomorrow on our website. And so if you want to review the questions or share this session with a friend who may not have been able to view the web, view this session, then they can go to our website tomorrow, probably afternoon, and they can view this session here. So let's see what we've got coming this way. Um, you mentioned sending the transcript by email. How do you do that? Well, you need to talk to your school because your school is the uh, is the one that's going to know your school uh, registrar or the secretary at the school is the one that's going to be able to tell you whether they prefer to send out a paper form or whether they prefer to send it out by email via parchment or DocuFied or any other official transcript service. So talk to your school registrar and ask them how they send transcripts to, to universities because that's the way we get your transcripts either by mail or by email but you cannot send a scanned copy of your of your unofficial or even official transcripts they must be sent from the school so this is another question I'm seeing come through that uh, we get a lot uh, across the four campuses. You know, which clusters are the toughest ones to get in, what, or which ones do I have a better chance at? Um, there is definitely a strategy involved. Uh, if you pick a cluster that has the word bio in it, I can tell you across the four sites that those are going to be very highly sought out clusters. And so the competition can be pretty tough. Uh, UC Davis has some biotechnology courses, biomedical as well, and those are very, very popular, tough to get into. So, uh, also at UCSD, uh, our clusters, one and two, so one is co the computers and everyday life, cluster two is mechanical engineering and kinetic sculptures, cluster seven is uh, bioengineering, the amazing red blood cell, and cluster eight is uh, working with um, uh, its regenerative medicine. Those are our most popular clusters. Uh, and uh, specifically, seven and eight, uh, we had over 180, almost 200 applicants for those, each of those clusters. And 18 students were picked for each. So you do the math, one out of 10 got in and I suspect it'll be just as popular this year. Now at UCSD we have a new cluster which is music and technology, our cluster nine. I would guess that's going to be a popular uh, topic as well since it's new and a lot of students are interested in interactions of computers and music. 
So a good strategy for you might be, if you wanted one of those popular high sought after clusters, is to apply for one, and some of them actually only let you apply for them as a first choice cluster. They don't even let you tick pick it as a second cluster. So apply for that one that you really want, and maybe the second one might be a better chance of getting in. It's your plan B, it's your backup, if you really, really are intent to go to, to Cosmos. Now, some students only make one choice, that's it. That's, that's the chances they're taking because if you don't get considered for that cluster for whatever reason, there's nothing else we can do for you. Now, another option on the application, online application, is you can, there is a choice to say, if I don't get into my first or second choice, then I'm willing to go into another cluster, any other cluster. That will increase your chances also. So if you picked two very popular ones and didn't get in, but you still really want to come, then that would be a good strategy to mark that box, because then you could be considered for another cluster. So that's some inside information for you. So uh, as I had already previously talked about, uh, we don't allow teacher recommendations to come through the mail. They, uh, at UCSD, we do not. The other campuses, you need to check with them individually. Uh, whether they would accept a paper teacher recommendation. So uh, check with the campus, but I can tell you for UCSD, it must be an online application or teacher recommendation. Now, maybe you have a teacher that just will not do that and you really want to come to our campus or maybe another campus that doesn't accept uh, uh, paper recommendations. You might maybe consider a teacher from a different year, maybe a teacher you had a math teacher the year before uh, that would be willing to do the online. So that's an option for you. We'd love to have you come, but th at least on our campus, it's very difficult for us to transfer that information manually when we have so many applications. So, what helpful hints do we have in writing the short essays? Oh boy, okay, you really do want insider information. Um, okay, helpful hints. Uh, like I mentioned before, watch for the grammatical and typographical you know, slash spelling errors. There's nothing more frustrating to the reader of the applications, and I will tell you that the Cosmos staff here, we read every application and review them prior to sending them to faculty. Our staff likes to tell students, think about who you're writing these essays to. Faculty at the university are going to, going to be reading your essays, your short essays. You need to sell yourself. Why should you be in Cosmos, and better yet, why should you be in their cluster? So sell yourself, put your best foot forward, have somebody pre-read your essays, don't put short abbreviations that you might use on a text message. Don't put, you know, LOL or whatever, those kind of things, or hi guys, or those slang type of words. That will really, really take away from your application. And try and think about being unique. Just saying you want to be a doctor, we have a lot of students that have that same aspiration. So you need to set yourself apart. What have you done that's related to that cluster. What experiences do you have? What career goals do you have? What kind of preparation do you have? So you're selling yourself. Don't tell me about your uncle who is a doctor or an engineer. We want to know about you. What makes you special? And why do we want to have you in the Cosmos program? and specifically in that cluster. So one of the questions is a general one that says, you know, why do you want to spend four weeks in Cosmos? Or what things have you d done that are related to STEM? So those can be more general and you can just sh share your story. Tell us your story. It's interesting to us when we can read about those unique things that set you apart over hundreds of applications. 
hundreds of essays. So give it your best shot and sell yourself. And have somebody read it, proofread it, and help you out as well if needed. An English teacher is a great resource because they can help you with your sentence structure and those kind of things that could distract the faculty who are reading your application. Good question. So, will stronger grades, strong grades and teacher recommendations uh, be enough, be accepted? Accepted? <laughs> if my essays uh, aren't strong, I would assume. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to read minds here. So, um, it, that could help balance it out. If you, uh, if you have uh, essays that, you know, are on the weak side, but you have really great teacher recommendations and, and your GPA is, is very strong, that can help balance it out. So, and, and also your extracurricular activities that are related to science, technology, engineering, math, uh, leadership. So that, we look at, at the applications holistically. Grades are really important. I mean, most, most of our students are, you know, an average unweighted 3.5. So uh, you're, you're thinking, well, you know, I'm almost straight A. Well, most of the Cosmos students are. On, conversely, a lower GPA can be hel helped out by strong essays and strong teacher recommendations and strong extracurricular. So we, do, we don't just focus on one area, but I will tell you that if I see an essay that only has one or two sentences, and even if you're a student with a 4.0 and, and the teachers think you rock, I'm very suspicious if your essay is only one or two sentences and very generic and not very inspired. So you need to be well-rounded and think this out. Don't try. Please don't do your essay on the last day at 3 o'clock. You will go crazy trying to whip through it, and it's very stressful. And our website, our application website, gets crazy busy on the last day. It's just, it, it, you know, it's the same as the UC and other college applications. People who wait to the last day sometimes can't finish on time, and that causes a lot of panic. So this is a good lesson and how to apply for a university. Think way ahead, plan ahead, get that application done so you're not stressed out at the end and not deciding at the last minute what you should write about. So be prepared. Good, good uh, preparation for college application time when that com time comes around for you. Okay, so is there an interview process or uh, oh, if I pay, am I automatically accept? Oh, oh, okay. I, there's not an interview process. Uh, I wish we could. It would be great to talk to all of you, but we only have your applications are due to be turned in by February 21st, and we notify you by April 19th. On April 19th whether you've been accepted. So we have less than two months to make sure all of our applications are complete, to make sure that all of our applications are reviewed, that faculty receive the applications, and then decisions are made. So we wouldn't have time to interview hundreds of students at each, you know, you know potentially thousands of students. So, uh, and if you pay, no, you're not automatically accepted. As I mentioned, it's a competitive process and uh, like I said, about one and four, one and three, depending on the campus, uh, the cluster, get accepted to Cosmos. It is a competitive program. And because of that, if you mention that you've completed Cosmos, if you get accepted and you complete the program, putting that on your college application or your scholarship applications will get noticed because they know that you have spent your summer in an academic enrichment program rather than doing maybe soccer camp or some other thing that you're, you're really serious about your studies. So this will look great on your applications for college, universities, scholarships, internships. So uh, get, give it your best shot to make sure your application is really great. So how many 8th and ninth graders are, are uh, admitted? 
So um, it depends on the campus. Uh, each campus has a different rate depending on how many students from those grades apply. I can tell you for our campus, uh, and really across the four campuses, it's very, very difficult to get in as an eighth grader. Um, you have, it's most specific, more specifically, it's usually because of the prerequisite requirements. Uh, there are very few courses across the campuses that uh, an eighth grader can meet the prerequisites. Then once you meet the prerequisites, you're competing with some really top-notch eighth graders from across California and the United States and internationally. So I would say don't hesitate to apply. It's a good experience for you. Uh, and you'll get better if you do it again. If you don't get in the first year and you apply again later, you're going to already have experienced the application process and you will be more polished the next time you do. Or just wait and apply when you have more courses that you're uh, eligible to apply for. So, you know, a handful of eighth graders at UCSD have typically been accepted over the years. Uh, ninth graders have a little bit better chance. Uh, but more than 50% of our students tend to be uh, currently in the 11th grade and then in 10th grade after that. So I want to remind you that we're going to post this video uh, on our website, our YouTube channel. There's a link on our website uh, so that you can access the information again or if you have a friend or a classmate that missed this session, they can go back tomorrow, probably afternoon, and be able to watch this again, or you might want to review it again as well. So again, you need to go to our Cosmos UCSD website, and we'll be posting that link at the end of this session. So the next question is, uh, how many students do you accept? Uh, as I mentioned in a previous question, uh, at UCSD, we plan to accept approximately 185 students, which is up 20 students from last year. So better opportunities for you folks this year than the folks that applied last year. Uh, at the other campuses, uh, it varies. Um, it can be anywhere from around 160 all the way up to 200, which uh, UC Davis accepts 200 because they have uh, a larger amount of course offerings uh, as well, so they're able to accept more students. So which component of the application is most important? The grades, the teacher recommendations, the essays? Uh, they're all very important. Um, so I. I, I, there's not one that's weighted, I think, more than the others, but certainly your grade point average is really important. You have a really low GPA, um, you know, if it's a low, below 3.0, it's really going to swing to those other components of the application. If you have a top grade, then we're going to start looking at the essays and the teacher recommendations and then the extracurricular activities. So they're all very important, so make sure that you pay attention and make sure all of them are completed and submitted on time. So here's our next one. Do we give preference to students from the San Diego area? Uh, actually, we don't. Uh, what happens is we tend to have more applicants from San Diego because many of them want to be close to home or uh, don't want to pay for the travel cost to go to another campus. So just because of that, our percentage tends to be higher. But last year it was, yeah, I think it was around 35-40% were from San Diego area. The rest were from outside the area or out of state uh, or international. And so that is just that happens just because a lot of times there might be issues with paying for transportation or getting to the campus. So, but there is no preference giving, given to uh, you if you are from San Diego. You're all on the same playing field. So no worries if you're from out of the area.
if I'm not accepted, are there other programs like Cosmos? Oh, that's another great question. Thank you. Um, or uh, another question might be is, you know, can you go to a Cosmos? If you don't get a Cosmos at UC, UC San Diego, can I get into Cosmos at UC Davis? No, you have to pick one campus to apply to. So pick the one that you really, really like, the, the clusters that you have two top rated clusters in your mind that you want to apply to. So you can't do your first choice at you know, UC San Diego and your second choice at UC Irvine. They both have to be on the same campus. Now if you find out you didn't get accepted, you can, for uh, UC San Diego, on our website, if you go to our website, uh, we have uh, under um, prospective students, uh, we have a link to similar programs. It's on the last list uh, link on the left side. And so there you can get information for similar STEM and summer programs that uh, are offered either in the area or outside of the area. Uh, and so it may not be too late to apply since you'll find out April 19th whether or not you're accepted. Many programs are still accepting students at that time. So that would be a good place to start. Uh, we also have information about other programs that are offered on the UC San Diego site uh, campus. And you could contact your other uh, Cosmos campuses and ask them if they would have recommendations as well if you're not applying to UC San Diego. Let's, okay, so we, give this, we get this question a lot. Um, if you live near UCSD or you know fairly close, students will ask, well, can we commute? Do you have a commute option? Can I just you know drive in every day or go home every weekend? Uh, that we don't have that option. There are programs on the campus at UCSD, and I'm sure at the other UC campuses that have that provision where you can commute. But at Cosmos, we ask you to be able to make a commitment for the entire four weeks. Each campus has a family visitation opportunity uh, for UCSD. It's halfway through the program, so you can go home for the weekend. Uh, some of the other campuses let you go home every weekend. So you can look at the website or, even better yet, go to our application or our info session specifically, and we'll have information about which campuses have every weekend or every other weekend. But again, you need to be able to spend the night. We don't have a commuter option. A lot of our activities that are really community building occur in the evenings and on the weekends, and we have a lot of fun, I guarantee. So we have a student that needs to work out uh, for football uh, during the program. Uh, again, you wouldn't be able to go home to do that. Can't let you on your own just go somewhere to do gym workouts. We don't have access to our campus gym. Certainly can bring your own uh, small free weights with you. We do have plenty of activities uh, that are related to sports that you can do. Uh, we do soccer and um, uh, tag football and volleyball and Quidditch. Those kind of things happen in the evenings and on the weekends. But you cannot like have a personal trainer meet you or have a, a buddy meet you up at the gym or the track. Uh, you are considered minors. You are minors. And so we're responsible for you and your safety. And so you need to be in the residential area in the evenings uh, or with our staff. So if you have another activity like soccer or football or cheerleading, you're going to have to be able to take the four weeks out from that commitment. So think about that before you apply. What other campuses uh, offer Cosmos? Uh, so not only uh, do we have Cosmos at UCSD, uh, which is great. <laughs> They're all great, but we're, we're, we're kind of proud of our campus, um, a little bit biased. Uh, it's also offered at UC Irvine, UC Davis, and UC Santa Cruz, so four sites. Again, here is our application website, and here you can go to the various campuses to see what they're offering uh, on their, on, for their program, what the dates are. Note that some campuses uh, specifically Irvine starts earlier than the rest of the campuses 
Uh, and I believe Santa Cruz might even have be a little bit uh, different. I, I'm not recalling that. But if you go onto the application website, it gives you information on the clusters, gives you information on the dates. So see, you can see that right here. And you can get information as well. So uh, it's just day, it's just Irvine that starts early. Um, so if you have a you know a commitment of family vacation or ASB camp, you might want to pay attention to the dates. Then also look at the clusters. You can make sure you pick a campus that you can get to, as well as has two clusters that you really want to attend. How are the residential halls set up? Well, they're different at every campus, so I can speak for UCSD. We have two residential halls uh, on campus uh, that are in the northwest part of our campus, and there's a male and a female residential hall. They are not co-ed, uh, and we're very strict about that. There are some common areas like lounges and such where boys and girls can um, study or work together, but uh, they cannot go up into the uh, the suites or the rooms. So, uh, and it's set up in a quad area where we have other residential halls. Uh, there is a dining area that's adjacent to that area as well, and laundry facilities and uh, places where you can you know, get by bottled water, those kind of things. And um, there's also a piano at our lounge where you could practice piano if you wanted to or places in the green where you could you know, do uh, various activities, like if you wanted to practice yoga or do some crafts, so, yeah. Can parents or families or friends, I would guess, visit <laughs> uh, on Saturdays? Uh, we are uh, very, very much focused on safety for our students. And so on the family visitation weekends, parents can come and either visit with the students on Friday for a couple hours and or Sunday for a couple hours. Uh, that could be family or friends, but students would have to be checked out by a guardian or by their parents to be able to leave. And we can't have family or friends coming in times that are not set up for that purpose. We, we, it's a safety issue for us and we do take that very seriously. So uh, anyone that is going to be visiting um, would have to come during the specific visiting hours and uh, days. So we get this question a lot as well. Apparently a lot of you play tennis. Yes, absolutely bring your tennis racket. Uh, you can also, uh, if you have something that, like like I said, some small free weights you could bring. Uh, you can bring your musical instrument if you'd like. I wouldn't recommend bringing a piano. That could be kind of tough. But you can bring your guitar or your flutes or your trumpet. Well, your trumpet. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I want to be your roommate, but you could. And uh, there are areas where you could practice. And we do have tennis courts that are available that students can play. Again, they have to be uh, with someone. We don't let them go out on their own, although tennis by yourself could be challenging. Uh, but we would, you would have to be supervised uh, for that. So yes, we do have tennis, and we also have swimming. Uh, we go swimming, um, like usually once a week, we have swimming opportunities. We also have rock climbing available on our campus as well. Uh, basketball, volleyball, all those opportunities are available to you. So yes, bring your tennis rack, absolutely. What are the income li limits to be eligible for partial financial assistance? Uh, it varies depending on what your parents' adjusted gross income is on their tax return, as well as the number of dependents that are claimed. So uh, you, you need to go to our website. We can give you more information on uh, kind of some guidelines on that. It just depends. So what I say to students is if, if it's going to be a struggle to attend Cosmos, go ahead and apply for financial assistance. Let us make the decision for you whether or not you get that, and then you can make the decision whether or not you'll attend. So if in doubt, go ahead and submit an application for financial assistance along with your parents' income tax for 2013 or 2012 if they have not done their taxes yet. 
and we'll make a decision and let you know. Once you've been accepted, we'll let you know whether or not you've been offered financial assistance, either full or partial. <laughs> so I've been, we've been kindly reminded that we have 10 minutes left in our session. That was really subtle, wasn't it? And um, this would be the chance to ask any more burning questions you might have for us that we can respond to with the time we have left. So uh, go ahead and type them in so that we can try and address everyone's questions before we have to sign off at 730. Does Cosmos provide transportation to and from the program or to the campuses? Uh, we do not. That's something you would have to set up. Uh, we also don't provide uh, transportation from the airport or the train station, so you would have to set up a shuttle. And if you have questions on that, you know, give us a call or email us. We also set up a Facebook page for our students who are accepted, and many times students send, set up carpools uh, from their areas to be able to come down here and share the cost of that. And so that's a, not a problem to do that. We highly recommend that. But we do not provide transportation. You would need to take care of that. And if that's a struggle for you, talk to your schools. Sometimes they can help you with those funds to be able to do that. So don't let that hold you back. We really, really want you to be able to attend if you get accepted. So talk it over with your counselor and your teachers and also give the campus a call too if you have more questions regarding transportation issues. Is my schedule planned and uh, do I have to have time to explore the campus I would assume? Yeah. See I read minds don't I? Um, yes we have a planned schedule uh, during the day specifically Monday through Friday you're in classes usually from about 9 to 4 with a lunch break for an hour uh, and those are planned with lectures and labs and field trips and those kind of experiences in the evening we do have uh, programming activities you will have some free time time to catch up on email all the campuses have access to uh, email and internet so you do have time to catch up there time to eat, and time to do any assignments that you might have for your course, for your cluster. And then there's programming time with activities and choices of things to do. And then you'll have to be back into your dorm by a certain time. So you can't just be gone all night. You have to be checked in when lights are out. And usually between 10 and 11. Uh, we don't just let you freely explore the campus. We do usually offer campus tours at UCSD. We do that on the first day you arrive. Um, and the, the residential assistants, our RAs, are great about taking you to different places on campus, as well as your teachers that you have in your clusters will also be taking you uh, to different places on your campuses. But you can't just go off on your own and you know get on the city bus or hang out. And we do allow those opportunities for you to do that. Uh, at some point during the, the program, but you can't be by yourself. We always practice the buddy system for safety because, as I said, safety is number one for all of our campuses. Okay, so I have a question about lunch letter. If you have a lunch letter, do you still need to send in the financial aid form? If you receive free or reduced lunch at your campus and you have a letter, from your school that you can mail to us, then you don't have to fill out the financial aid form. But make sure your name is on your letter, or if your name is different from what's on your transcript, we need to know who you are. So make sure your transcript matches the letter. Um, and if you have a nickname, maybe add that in there as well. Uh, and also, uh, we, if your school is a school where everybody is on free or reduced lunch, we still need to get a letter that's personalized to you that says that you are participating. We can't just get a letter from your counselor that says everybody gets free or reduced lunch at this school. We need to have a letter for each student. Really important. Thank you. So, um, so yes, again, students are responsible for transportation to and from the Cosmos campus, whether you're flying, taking the train, going by car, 
planes, trains, automobiles. Um, you have to provide your transportation. We do not pay for airfare or train tickets. You need to be able to get to the campus and be able to leave the campus with your own funds. So even if you're on free or reduced lunch, you still need to be able to um, pay for your, your transportation to get to and from the campus. Also, if you're leaving for family weekend, you would have to pay for that as well. Many of our students stay for the family weekend, and that's not a problem at all. We have a lot of students that stay, and we do really fun things, so don't let that hold you back if you think you wouldn't be able to go home during the four weeks and you'll be the only one. You won't be the only one, I promise you that. Okay, so a question about um, laptops. Um, so most campuses will either provide you with a laptop to uh, borrow during the program, or you can bring your own or your tablet. And I think I can speak for all campuses that we have Wi-Fi networks that go across the campus, so you can use it in the classroom, you could use it back at the residential halls, you can use it in a recreation area. So you can, if you check one out from us, at least for our campus, you can also do the same. You're not restricted to any one area. Can't take it home for the weekend. Can't take it home when you leave, but you can have it while you're on campus. So we have time for a few more questions. When and how will I find out if I've been accepted? And can I find out earlier? So you'll have a username and a password when you apply to Cosmos. Save that. It's really important that you hang on to that. The username is your email, typically. Uh, and so you'll want to save that information because on April 19th and after, you can log into the website that you applied at and find out whether or not you've been accepted, waitlisted, or denied. So those are the three uh, or it could say incomplete, which means that your application was not complete. So another good point is to check the, after you've applied and check every once in a while make sure that we've received your transcripts and your teacher recommendations because if you apply, we're not going to get those automatically. It takes a little while for number one for your school to send some of those things and your teachers to finish the recommendations and then we have get a lot of paper uh, and a lot of things sent uh, transcripts that we need to be able to log in so give us some time don't panic but do check and make sure that yours doesn't say incomplete a few weeks after you've applied give it a couple weeks uh, but uh, you want to make sure it's not incomplete or your application will not be considered if it's incomplete it's missing materials or parts of the application, such as your teacher recommendations or your transcripts. You can't find out earlier than the 19th. It's not posted till that. So again, um, check the website, the application website for Cosmos, uh, where you applied on April 19th or after to find out what your status is. If you have a free lunch letter, uh, do you automatically uh, in my cost cover. So if you receive a free or reduced lunch, then you uh, will receive a free, I should say you should receive, you'll receive full financial assistance to attend. You just need to get here. You need to get here and be able to go home, but otherwise your tuition for Cosmos will be covered. Now any spending money you might want to bring for field trips, or if you want to go to the bookstore or those kind of things or some of the uh, on-campus convenience stores, that would be your responsibility to bring money to buy those, those types of things. So I think we're going to have time for maybe one more question. Yeah, we can do one more question. So let's see what the last question is here. So I meet the prerequisites for a cluster if, <laughs> uh, if I'm currently enrolled. Yes, as long as uh, you're currently enrolled or you plan to complete the course before uh, the end of the school year, then yes, you would meet the prerequisite. So just put it as in progress on your application where, it's, where you put your grades for your science and math courses you need to put IP for in progress uh, rather than put a grade and that way we know that you are going to have met the prerequisite before uh, Cosmos starts, so yes. 
So that's all we have for now. I, you had some great questions for me. I thank you for tuning in with us. Again, uh, if you have additional questions, feel free to contact us either by email or by phone. This is the website for the Cosmos application. So if you have questions regarding the application, you can uh, send them to, the, to that uh, email. Or you can go to our Cosmos uh, at ucsd.edu email to be able to email us. And you can also visit our website, uh, which we'll be posting again at the end of the session, uh, if you have additional questions or specific ones that maybe we didn't cover today. Again, this session will be posted at no by noon tomorrow. So if you want to review it again or share it with someone, or maybe your parents didn't get a chance to see it, there's also other videos to view that are very helpful. I recommend that you view if you haven't done so already. So good luck. I wish you all the best. Work really hard to give us the best application possible. And I hope you'll join us this summer at Cosmos. Bye-bye.